eggs nature's original superfood i am sure all of us enjoy one form of the egg or the other but did you know that in order to satisfy our taste buds they have to lose their structure i know it seems like i'm stating the obvious but actually i'm not i'm not talking about this loss of structure we have all seen an egg transform when heat is applied but did you know that it's losing its structure this is a process called as denaturation to understand this we first need to know how protein gets their structure hence this video is for learning about protein structures and how they form at the cellular level proteins are produced by the process of translation in these minute organelles called as ribosomes Translation is when the information carried in the DNA about these proteins as nitrogen bases is then transcribed into an mRNA. mRNA is read as a triplet codon and there are amino acids that are assigned for each of these triplet codon. They then form into a chain. The chain of amino acids is called as a polypeptide. Amino acids are the basic units that make up any protein. Biologically speaking, proteins go through different levels of structure formation. The polypeptide chain that we saw is termed as the primary structure of proteins. Let's look at the structure in little more detail. Primary structure is a string of amino acids. It's a linear structure which gives you positional information of the amino acids. Now what does that mean? It means that it gives the amino acid sequence which amino acid comes first which comes fifth which comes seventh you know that sort of information the amino acid sequence is genetically determined meaning it is based upon the dna sequence itself the linear chain is different on both the ends and therefore we can say that a primary structure has polarity the first and the last ends usually have n terminal and c terminal respectively n terminal means amine terminal c terminal means carboxy terminal the first amino acids direction is considered as left the last ones is considered as right in between the amino acids we can find peptide bonds now how does a peptide bond form so here we have two amino acids who are coming close together we notice that the carboxyl group of the first amino acid and the amine group of the second amino acid react there is removal of water and it leads to the formation of this peptide bond c o n h bond or it's also called as the amide bond the resulting molecule is called as a dipeptide because it has two amino acids in it therefore when n number of amino acids come together we call it as a polypeptide we see the structural polarity even in a dipeptide towards the left we have the n terminal amine group towards the right side we have the carboxy terminal or the c terminal in nature we have a total of only 20 amino acids and these 20 amino acids are used across all organisms to make all the sorts of proteins the number of ways to make a protein is designated as 20 to the power n where n is the number of amino acids if you look at the structure from before it had seven amino acids so here n is equal to seven it's a heptapeptide so the number of possible combinations of a heptapeptide sequence is 20 to the power 7 which is 1 to 8 000 no it doesn't stop there it is 0 000 now let's look at an actual protein as an example human hemoglobin has 574 amino acids so the total number of possible combinations um in which the sequence can result is 20 to the power 574 but you know what it makes sense because it gives the vast diversity of protein in terms of its structure and function it is the initial amino acid sequence which determines what the final shape of the protein is going to be but even though there are these 
astronomical number of combinations nature always leans towards a structure which is chemically stable so finally when a structure forms it should be a stable structure that is why in spite of all these possibilities we only have one single structure for human hemoglobin okay so we have this primary structure the amino acids in them are starting to discover new interactions with other amino acids which are little away from it using a new chemical bond which turns out to be a hydrogen bond at this stage we can say that we have entered the secondary structure of a protein so how does that go about so again we have a sequence of amino acids stitched together here there are five amino acids the hydrogen bond is formed between the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amine group of another amino acid so if i generalize it i can say nth amino acid and n plus fourth amino acid which means the second amino acid is going to interact with the sixth third with the seventh and so on let's try to visualize this interaction a little better so the first amino acid interacts with the fifth amino acid that then forces the second third and fourth amino acids to form a loop this automatically curves the primary structure this bonding pattern is repeated for every amino acid until it forms a bunch of connected loops of hydrogen bonding now when this pattern is repeated for a certain section of the primary structure we end up with a very stable coil this is the alpha helix the stability here is due to intramolecular hydrogen bonding meaning hydrogen bonds that are formed within the initial polypeptide protein helices are always right handed an example of a protein containing alpha helix is alpha keratin it's the protein found in the hair and nails of mammals sometimes when multiple polypeptide chains come together they can also form hydrogen bonding in between them this interaction gives rise to what is known as the beta sheets or beta pleated sheets and the hydrogen bonding between them is intermolecular hydrogen bonding the way the hydrogen bond forms depends upon the orientation of the polypeptide chain with respect to each other now what do i mean by that so pay attention to chain 1 and chain 2 we see that the amine and the carboxy terminal are oriented in the same fashion now this sort of arrangement is called as a parallel arrangement we can see that the hydrogen bonding between them becomes alternate now if you notice polypeptide 2 and polypeptide 3 we can say that the orientation is reversed in between them this is called as a anti parallel orientation and we can see the hydrogen bond here is almost uh, straight but it skips one amino acid in between an example of a protein containing beta sheets is beta keratin which is found in the silk produced by silk moth this is how alpha helices and beta sheets are represented when they form bigger proteins many proteins contain regions of alpha helix and or beta sheets in the same polypeptide chain itself secondary structures are usually very rigid and overall they give a fibrous shape to the protein it's interesting to know that most of the structural proteins like actin collagen keratin have secondary structure proteins within them